Hey everybody, it's Micah Mitchell, and I am more excited than I've ever been to create a video because today we have Richard Lindner and Taylor Nelson from Digital Marketer and Scalable.co, and we are going to walk through a couple of their membership sites. They have two different membership sites using a very, very similar tech stack serving two pretty different audiences, you know, really high end on one side and then just a ton of content membership levels on the other side. So Richard, why don't you, if you wouldn't mind, give us a little bit of a, an overview in case somebody doesn't know Digital Marketer, which I can't imagine because when I think of anything online, I think of you guys for like 15, 20 years now. So, so maybe just tell us kind of how it got started and, and where you guys are today and then we'll dive in. Sure, well, hopefully there's a ton of people that haven't heard of us, um, uh, fingers crossed. Um, hopefully a lot of them are listening to this, uh, but thank you, uh, We, well, I'm excited to be here too. Um, you know, we've used Membarium uh, for, oh gosh, an, I don't know, a decade or so. Um, so uh, for us at Digital Marketer, like you said, we've got, um, we've got a, a pretty diverse uh, product line. Digital Marketer is 13 years old, um, you know, we, we really, we really did our best to uh, to lead the charge in professionalizing kind of the industry uh, at a time where internet marketing was a thing. Um, we kind of we, we kind of kind of took a longer term bet and said like this is eventually going to become a, a a career. This is this isn't something that just is going to be a way to make money online. Like this is going to be a department, a a job within every organization. So we bet pretty early on, uh, and and really have been hot hot on the term digital marketing. You know, for well over a decade, um, our our goal was to kind of open source what we do uh, to grow all of our different companies. Uh, at one point, we had well over thirty companies um, that we were operating in in just every industry uh, that you could imagine. A little bit of entrepreneurial ADD for sure. Um, we've since really narrowed our focus um, to, to B2B. So at Digital Marketer, um, we support marketers. We still uh, we, we still believe that the, the best way uh, to enable marketers is not only uh, uh, training, but to open source, um, templatize and open source what's working for us and what's working for our, um, our partners uh, and, and our different portfolio companies to grow our brands online, right? To grow our brands through uh, through all the different channels. So Digital Marketer, we do training and certification. Uh, we've got coaching and, and really that leads to a pretty robust product line. We have a la carte purchases. Uh, we have team purchases and memberships. Uh, we have coaching that have small groups and it's a, the business model has evolved and, and the technology on the back end has to support several different levels and several different access types. Um, and I'm um, very thankful for you, Micah, and everything you guys do because you enable that, right? You enable that. So that's Digital Marketer. Um, Scalable was the natural progression for my business partners, uh, Ryan Dice, Roland Frazier, and myself. Um, when we started Digital Marketer, really what we did to grow our businesses was market, right? That was our job. Our job was to, to do marketing, to grow the business, uh, to grow all the businesses, figure out what's working, templatize that, deliver it to our customers at Digital Marketer. Um, well, eventually we kind of stopped doing marketing because we had a team, we had people that did marketing for us and, and really our day to day uh, became very different. Uh, we were leading a company. We were, you know, we were focused more on, you know, other aspects of, of growing a company and, and, you know, making sure that we're leveling up and we kind of had no outlet for, for distributing what we've, we've learned and figured out, but we still had that core competence and, and kind of that, that muscle memory of documenting the processes that we used. So scalable was that next natural progression at scalable. Our goal is to help entrepreneurs scale themselves because so they can scale their companies because we believe that companies are better, economies are better if founders can stay in that driver's seat. Now, the product line at, at Scalable is greatly different from Digital Marketer. You know, Scalable really, we're dealing with founders. Uh, our, our primary offer is um, our Scalable operating system. It's a it's a cohort-based accelerator that, that we go through live four times a year. Uh, enabled by software. And then we have uh, different levels of mastermind groups. We have uh, peer mastermind groups, and then we have uh, those mastermind groups that have a live meeting component. And we have um, kind of a licensed program. Our scalable uh, business advisors or SBAs uh, are in there. So we have um, consultants and coaches that are licensed to deliver our IP on behalf of their clients. So we only have about four 
real products for sale at Scalable, but we leverage the exact same technology stack uh, to enable and support that business. So um, Mimbirium really is, is there to, to leverage and, and enable both of those businesses and, and the, on top of being powerful um, as a tool, it gives us the ability to have a centralized uh, technology department. Really, if we're being honest, Taylor is also known as the technology department. Um, Taylor's able to build all the funnels. Taylor's able to build and maintain all of the, um, you know, all of the the back end and and configure all the plugins and make sure that we're enabling both of these very similar but different business models. Um, and and he does that. He does have a team. It's not just him. He's got uh, he's got a couple of. Uh, of, of people very, very smart that work with them, but we don't have a giant team and we don't have to build that uh, specialized knowledge at each of these companies. We're able to keep it centralized. So that's kind of the difference between the two companies and what we do. Um, hopefully that, that gives, it paints a picture. I'm sure you don't want to talk about that. I'm sure you want to dive in and see kind of how we do it. Yeah, I'd love to see some of how, of it, uh, how you do it. So Taylor, being the the resident nerd, we established this before the call. I'm also a nerd, so <laughs> we're in good company. Probably most of the people on here. So Taylor, if you wouldn't mind um, sharing your screen, and I want to say, if possible, let's go to Digital Marketer first, since that was the first site. And for those of you listening, to put some of what Richard said in membership terms, these guys started out selling, you know, courses, memberships. They, I feel like we're one of the pioneers in doing the whole certification thing and we're really successful with their certified program. Um, I love digital marketer. And so when you guys started Scalable, the first time I heard about it, I signed up for one of your higher level programs and I've, I've just been thrilled, like the event, the, all the, the touches, the Slack group. So I've seen it firsthand, you know, I've bought uh, little pieces of your digital marketer stuff for myself, for my team, and then now being part of the founders board, I can see what you mean where you guys are just great at documenting what you do. Um, so that explanation is very helpful. Um, but yeah, Taylor, if you can show us, you know, and, and I guess starting out conceptually, where do people start before they're a member of Digital Marketer? What do they first see? Is it like a, a free video? They opt in kind of what's the path from not knowing you guys to being a paying member? The great, um, mm -hmm. great thing about, oh, sorry, go ahead, Taylor. No, say, Richard, do you want to speak more to the, yeah. to how they get there? I can talk about what happens once they make it. Sure. That's that's why we're a good one to punch. Um, yeah, the, the cool thing about Digital Marketer is our, our flagship kind of methodology or our, our primary methodology is the customer value journey. The CVJ teaches the, the you know, how customers go from uh, unaware to aware to uh, engaged uh, to subscribe. So we have several funnels that we use um, for acquisition, um, but we really lead with a content first strategy. So um, we're, we're really beefing up on organic um, content on social and, and on the blog, but our primary uh, method of, of customer acquisition and awareness is by uh, driving uh, paid social ads to content and then retargeting uh, to, to, a, to a relevant lead magnet. So for us, it's, it's, it's always been templates and tools um, are the things that we like to provide. We think that's the highest level value. So um, someone may start with the one page marketing plan, which is our CVJ. All right, that's kind of that. Again, uh, for us, it's it's critical that someone understands our methodology before we introduce them to our world. So starting there is both uh, an amazing tool that we can give away for free and add value, even if someone chooses not to spend a dollar with us. Um, but it introduces them to that methodology, and it's usually a pretty good entry point to get them to want to spend money with us. So for us, uh, the one page marketing plan or one page marketing blueprint, which is that customer value journey is the ideal starting place. We have several other ones, but that one's really where the best customers uh, come through. Because uh, if you understand that core methodology, then ascension happens pretty quickly. And, and I think it is a, a nice little value loop, uh, value for us, value for them. So um, if we're starting there, uh, that, that is kind of the, the, the best place. Then once they go from there, we, we typically get, try, to, uh, try to get them into digital marketing mastery, which that is our flagship certification that covers uh, the eight critical core disciplines of digital marketing. We, uh, we like to think of, of um, the ideal marketer as T-shaped, right? They have a, a broad understanding of all aspects of marketing, but a deep understanding or specialization of one. So usually it's the one page marketing blueprint over uh, to an offer to get our digital marketing mastery certification. Uh, and then 
uh, attempting to figure out what area of specialization. So it's a it's a it's a a la carte purchase that hopefully then leads into a, a membership. Yeah, that makes sense. And and I know from being a client on the other side, that was pretty much my journey, like getting into your guys, your lingo and your concepts. And once you know the concepts, it's like you almost have to go buy at least one of the courses. Be- right. And I love that you're selling marketing because it's I feel like it's easy to sell because the person buying it should get a return rather quickly. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, right. So. So, yeah, I know from being on the other side of it, uh, it it's very magnetic. It drew me in pretty easily. Um, Taylor, are you ready to show us the site? Yes, I am. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Can you all see this? Yep, we see you. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so here's that page uh, Richard was talking about for the one page marketing blueprint. Um, it's just a standard landing page with a, a small form. And then it goes into a thank you video, kind of talks about what they downloaded and then uh, the offer for Digital Marketing Mastery. Um, from here, everything is pretty much the same for us. Uh, we're using Keep Max Classic. Um, so it goes to an order form. And then um, from there, you get access through an HTTP post to our website, our member site for Mimirian. Um, So what that looks like is we're interesting because we have it completely gated. So there's no way to get to the member site unless you are a paying member. Um, so we, there's no free way to sign up. The only way you get access is if you make a purchase. Um, so here's what it would look like for um, a normal user when they log in. So you just log in. And here's kind of our dashboard um, with all of our products. In this case, I already have some purchases in here. So you can see I can get started on these. Um, some of these, if I don't have access, will be locked and see details. Um, and part of this is though, um, always Mimberium, is so we, we show these templates, whether it's to enroll in a training um, or in this case of one that's locked, um, go ahead and buy their upgrade. But all of these are set up as, as free courses, but they're only delivered the, the buttons based on their Mimberium access level. So it's a way to kind of keep everything open on the front end, but just choose whether they can view it or not. So. Um, that's kind of our approach to it. Um, do you have any questions about that so far? I guess one question that comes to mind is, are those one click upsell buttons or do they fill out another form? These ones are currently um, uh, go to order forms, but okay. we do have upsells. So for example, on the back end of the customer value journey, where too, we have an upgrade to the certification bundle and that's uh, all one click upsells. So um, we have, we're using both, but this, this is something to be here with one purchase. We want to make sure that we don't discharge our card necessarily right away. Um, and plus we have the benefit of giving them upsells on the back end of another order form um, for a different offer if we need to as well. Yeah, that makes sense. So, you know, it's obvious you guys have a bunch of different products in there and you can, you know, give them access to only those they have and upsell them on the others. How does community factor into this course environment? Where does that come into play? For, for Digital Marketer, it, uh, it exists in Facebook and then some of our higher level um, like certified partners and our elite coaching program, they're inside of, uh, either, like I said, Facebook groups or Circle communities. So we kind of have those separate. Um, so if I was a member here, I would see a button that would say community and that would link out to the respective group. Um, but since I'm not, I'm just an a la carte buyer, I don't see that option here. Gotcha, that makes sense. Yeah, for okay. us with community, um, the secret sauce has been to figure out where your people already are. I think I love that you said, uh, Micah, you know, it's like the Slack group, you know, why Slack and not Facebook? Why Facebook for digital marketer? Well, digital marketers are in Facebook, right? Our people at digital marketer uh, are are in Facebook. That's where they're running their ads. Um, That's where they're running their groups. That's where they're at. So if we want to reduce friction or increase engagement, in our communities, the the starting point or the kickoff point there is to figure out where they are and, and build community where they're already used to going. In um, in scalable, you know, when we're looking at, at at founders and executives, where are they already communicating on a on a daily basis? It's less Facebook and it's more Slack. So that's a Slack group, and for here, it's it's uh, it's a Facebook community. Yeah, I almost like started crying tears of happiness when you guys started that Slack group. That was one of the best, <laughs> best things. Um, Cause just like you said, and you guys surveyed people, I believe to find out. We did. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, it was such a perfect fit. Um, okay. So you've got some a la carte courses when they buy a membership, for example, does it include all of the a la carte or, 
when okay so it includes everything uh yeah so we have, we have different levels but most uh like our, our main one just runner lab that would unlock everything so you would get um well currently it would include certifications but we have something coming for that where it uh, may include those in the future um but everything but certifications would be included so everything would be unlocked it would look like this no locks anywhere either get started or zoom or start over uh, depending on the level of completion from these courses Gotcha. And, and I understand you guys are also using LearnDash, which I love that product. I love Justin. I know he, he sold the company a bit ago, but um, with your courses, uh, how much, you know, quizzing, badges, points, how much gamification did you feel like you wanted or needed with those certification courses? The certifications have um, quizzes and a, and a final exam and a badge. Uh, really what we, when, when we talk to and surveyed our audience. Um, we want to make sure that if we're going to certify someone, that that they're they're able to to retain, right? That it's not just flying through. It's not completion based. Um, so modules unlock after successfully completing a quiz on each certification uh, on each certification. And at the end, uh, before you get your badge and your digital certificate, you have to pass a final exam. Um, that's because we are, you know, we are. We are certifying, like we're we're kind of attaching our brand to your your knowledge and your ability to you know to effectively market an e-commerce store or um, to to acquire customers or to effectively uh, use email for marketing. So uh, we think that one, it's a it's a benefit. It's what our what our customer wants. They're looking for um, confidence, credibility, and authority, right? Like whether it's for um, whether it's for their career and, and you know getting a job or a promotion, or whether it's for customer acquisition, client acquisition, and in in that agency space, so for them it's very important um, that that they have that that credibility, and for us it's very important that if we give that to them, that that they know what they're doing. But for our workshops and and other trainings, uh, we don't leverage any of those. As far as the the gamification, we don't do probably as much as we should there i think we could we could do a whole lot better in um, gamifying uh, all aspects of of the membership um, so we really focus in and around um, the 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 testing and quizzing uh, but just on certifications that makes sense though especially like you're saying if you're going to attach your brand to somebody um, we kind of followed your lead and did a certified partner program and i was a little bit worried that that might somebody might be a certified partner and mistreat mm. a customer or something and, and luckily we've never had that, you know? Have you guys had any issues with anything like that where you had to say like, hey, you're not certified now or has it been pretty? Yeah, so we have, well, so we have our certifications and then we have our certified partner program, um, which is a totally different login and look. So um, if you're a certified partner, meaning you're licensed to deploy our IP uh, on behalf of your customers uh, in the same way that Scalable has our um, SBA, Scalable Business Advisor. Digital Marketer has certified partners. Uh, it's a little confusing because we also certify individuals on uh, on skill sets or methodologies. Uh, we do, we have had to um, remove two partners from the program, which you know I would say over a like five year period. Um, that's and the you know the the hundreds of partners that that we've been lucky enough to have and and to to walk with and and support and grow together uh i feel pretty good about that we yeah. you know we've had a we've had a couple of op, uh instances we have a a, a way for customers to uh, report or um any shenanigans that they feel may have happened and and we have kind of a uh, a mediation or a resolution process that we have with customers and 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 certified partners because frankly they're both customers right um luckily that while while there have been um you know i would say maybe a half a dozen uh of those uh disputes all have ended very very well uh for both parties um in in two instances we had to um, ask people to leave the program and and you know make it right with with the um with the customer but I think all in all, it's been a, a really, a really pleasant experience. Yeah, that makes sense. And and like you said, two or whatever out of hundreds is yeah. is great, is amazing because you you don't control all those people. And um, being in some of those same circumstances, sometimes it's kind of like you, you've got the partner and the client, and maybe there's some miscommunication, misunderstanding. So having that kind of higher authority be able to come in and be like, hey guys, how do we how do we fix this? Mm -hmm. Is nice for everybody. Yeah, and you hit the nail on the head there. Usually, it it boils down to communication, 
including but not limited to expectations or <laughs> unset expectations. Either the you know the customer expects the moon and and the 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 partner or the agency doesn't do a good job at, at, at setting those expectations, whether it be timelines, results, or scope. And now you know the, both parties are just a little misaligned. Um, but frankly, that's easy to fix, right? You come in and, and you're you're truly just moderating and you find out like, well, you expected this and you expected this and neither one of you talked about it. So how do we get back and, and find something here? I love those. I don't love it, right? But that's the wrong word. Those are easy to fix, right? Those are easy to yeah. fix because really it's not a, it's their fault, it's their fault. It's kind of a misalignment. Our job's just to realign. Um, so like you said, uh, those are, those are numbers I can deal with. Those are issues I can deal with. We've been very, very lucky. It sounds like you have too. Yeah, and it's. Uh, I'm sure you guys try to set expectations with the partners like we do, saying like, hey, you got to treat your clients right. That's part of this and all that. They sign um, on to our core values. So as mm -hmm. part of the process, like they're adopting our brand, which means they're adopting our core values and our beliefs. So we actually have a, a, a in the agreement, a standalone document where they agree that they are adopting our core values as their own. Very cool. That's something I got to think about. That's a great actually. <laughs> yeah. um, Taylor, could you show us maybe the back end as an admin? Because I, I want people to be able to kind of see maybe some of the plugins you guys are using. Um, is this a, I would guess it's maybe a custom theme, but is it based on a theme? You know, if somebody yes, wanted to, go ahead. I'm sorry, I was going to say, uh, we're actually using Elements or Hello, which is just the, the most lightweight theme you can probably ever get. But uh, the best thing about it is you can customize everything with the theme builder. So any page you want, your header, your footer, your CSS files, anything can be customized um, on top of it without having to worry about other themes when you have stuff built in. So on, on one of our sites, we'd use Buddy Boss, uh, the Buddy Boss theme, um, which works also great with Mimbarium and with LearnDash. But um, for our digital marketer member site, that's all on Elementor Hello, as are all of our part facing uh, like marketing and uh, business websites. Very cool. Um, yeah. yeah, I like the lightweight, you know, part of Elementor. If you'll scroll down through these, so there's one I see yeah. there already, the autocomplete learn dash lessons and topics. Mm -hmm. um, I don't get into this stuff every day, but that's one that I didn't even know existed. You know, that's probably yeah. a cool little pro tip. There's a, yeah, this one's great. And also I apologize, these are all not updated. Uh, we have some custom things added in, so uh, we've got to do it all at once as opposed to doing it and breaking something and locking people out of their accounts. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is great. This this makes it so you can just hit the next button as opposed to mark complete and learn dash, um, which hangs people up if you have to go in order. Um, so that's just something that's helpful. Um, duplicate page just for duplicating pages. Um, Elementor, Elementor Pro. Um, I2 SDK, which is used in Iberium, uh, Learn Dash, of course, and we have some of these Learn Dash uh, add-ons. So it's like the Course Grid, the Elementor um, widgets, Pro Panel for reporting, Zapier, and then this uh, Import Export, which is a paid plugin, but it actually works really well because we migrated uh, sites to this one, and we didn't have to, we have to remake every quiz question across you know 15 different quizzes and the 50 question seats. So this made it so we could put it in an Excel file and upload it that way without having to redo it. Um, manage notification emails. This is mainly for me, so I don't get emails when, uh, when some, whenever someone updates their password, or because uh, I get those all the time and it was super annoying. Yeah. So Taylor must that. hate me because yeah. he does not have this installed on scalable.co, <laughs> which I get the emails every time someone updates their password. So I'll, I'll change that out for you. Thank I'll just add sir. this plugin, we can fix it. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so also, obviously, in Mimbarium. Um, we did use this in the beginning, but we deactivated once we had everything uh, we needed from there. Um, one user avatar, this is just a way to easily add a profile picture for an author um, for one of our courses. Redirection for manually redirecting things if we update a course or something like that. Um, this is one we did, uh, Rewrite Rules Inspector. We're using custom URLs on all, all of our, our courses. Let me pull one up real quick and see. So generally, uh, when you go to a course in a Learn Dash site, it's always going to put courses in the URL. Yeah. And so we wanted to have it be whatever the, the course category was. So certification or workshop and to replace that for all the categories. So we're using, I was using this plugin just to, to figure out how to do it, but everything's done on, on the back end with some custom um, PHP functions. Um, Rocket One Click, this is a great uh, one click upsell plugin. So this is what we use on the back of order form. So uh, we can do it with Mimbarium when they're logged in, but this is great that you don't, they don't have to be logged in for it. So after purchase, 
mm. will have an upsell page be on the member site and use this plugin and it's already got their um their infusionsoft contact id from the url and all that stuff um that is then, truly a super plugin like yeah uh, taylor again renaissance man um you know, good at everything. I mean, when he dug around and found that plugin as an option, like that was a really big game changer uh, for us and our ability to uh, to keep the site light, to not have to just layer on additional, you know, keep with other with some other, you know, one click upsell builder um, in additional CRM. Right? I love you know, love Russell, love ClickFunnels, love Samcart, love love all the solutions. Spiffy, great. Love Michael and the guy. Like they're all great, but in trying to keep it, you know, as as light as possible, uh, and keep that tech stack as as you know as as slim as possible. That was that was a big deal for us. Um, I had never heard of it, and and I'm I'm pretty dialed in in the in the upsell and course builder and you know uh, landing page builder uh, um, kind of communities. So that was a great find. Yeah, it's, it's super easy to use. It's it's all built in on the back end of WordPress. And it's connected with your keep the API, so you can just click, go through the drop down, select your product, uh, select the price point, select any goals or action sets you want to get completed um, whenever they click the button. So it's it's all in one, which is awesome. Um, it even works with, with subscriptions, which uh, Infusionsoft will usually bulk uh, bill subscriptions, even for the first one. So this one pushes it through the first order as a one time order, and then sets up um, the billing to recur monthly uh, the following month, which is which is awesome. So you don't have to worry about uh, people getting access when their payment is actually declined, you know, in the middle of the night when they run those buildings. That is cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then uh, Uncanny, they do uh, some additional plugins as well for mainly for LearnDash. Um, Tencanny Reporting is a great one. We have, you know, like 50,000 subscribers, uh, WordPress subscribers that is on the site. So being able to to see all that data, sometimes it hangs up on the LearnDash Pro panel. And this one is great for showing course completions, enrollments. Uh, progress and everything like that on an entire level for everybody on the site. Um, and then, yeah, just some normal uh, sending emails and then just some basic forms as well. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you guys, I appreciate you being willing to show this because this is so valuable. Just like you said, you had to dig around and find that plugin, just showing people like, hey, this, this is how we put this together is so valuable. So thank you for showing that. Thank yeah. you for sharing. Mm -hmm. and that's good. Uh, thanks for having us on. Yeah. So we have, uh, as you saw in the front of it, we have we have a bunch of different products. So we have uh, a la carte access um, memberships for literally every single one of them. So there's a good two or three hundred of them on here. Wow. Um, followed by our where's the very bottom that by our main <laughs> subscriptions. So I have these down the bottom. You can see we have the basic or the lab partners, um, our elite coaching program or our lab plus, which includes the certifications. So these are just the, the basic things that kind of unlock everything. And then we have individual ones as well. So somebody can buy one product or they can buy all of them. And they're all managed through these membership levels. Gotcha. And for, for anybody watching this, there's a column to the right that has mostly zeros. And then there's some nines and tens at the bottom. And that's how when somebody logs in, even though there might be hundreds of products, it prioritizes those. So Membarian basically says, hey, if you're one of these guys, let's send you there instead, right? Yeah. Very cool. And it's also nice too, because it brings it to the bottom. So it's always easy to find those and it's not alphabetical. It's based mm -hmm. on that, that level, which is super helpful. Good, good, good. Yeah, Dave's a smart guy. <laughs> Dave who who programs <laughs> Membarium is a very smart guy. Mos Moskowitz? Uh, Bullock. That Dave? Bullock, that's right, that's right. Yeah, um, Dave did a ton of stuff early and, and really helped us super early on when we were like kind of beta with you guys, like our uh, our first one click upsell script that worked with Infusionsoft. Um, like we, we wrote in partnership with you guys. Um, it was this hefty thing on, on the back end um, that was great. And, and Dave, Dave worked to write all that. It was really cool. Yeah, I, I think when, when we started Minbarium, he was working with you guys before that as well, mm -hmm. doing, doing something. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so this is amazing on the digital marketer side. Is there anything else that you think people should see on this site before we bounce over and talk about the scalable side? Um, one thing that I think is kind of cool is just the, so the short codes are a big thing that Minbarium has. There's, we use them all the time. Uh, the biggest one is, where is it here? Mem has membership, this short code. We use this 
like like I said, so this uh, this is where we show either the purchase button or the like the enroll or resume buttons, and just based on this. So here we're using the same um, the tags that associate with the memberships. You can see over here we have all of our membership levels. We check the ones that we want. We're going to put them over here too. So these these are just custom forms, uh, custom fields uh, using the ACF plugin that map to an element or uh, like little widget. And so it loads a short code on there. And we just use these. So the, the short codes have by far been the most helpful thing. And uh, even like some of the PHP hooks in the back end uh, and the uh, developer resources have been have been super great. So if you, if you think you can't do it, you probably can do it. You just got to figure out what short code to use. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth. There are a ton of short codes. Um, and then like you said, the PHP functions on the back. This one in particular, I think is really interesting. The mem has membership because it's not just saying if they have a tag or if they've purchased a product, a membership is a combination of things that's saying they are current, they don't have failed payments, they don't have a lockout tag. So, it, so it's a little bit more complex. Um, but yeah, uh, Dave has put, you know, based on customer request about anything you can think of, if you combine enough short codes, you can pretty much do anything. Yeah, it's great. And I like what you said about how it, uh, it's based on the membership level, not necessarily the tag, because this does work great with um, umbrella accounts too. So a child account will get access even if they don't have the, the actual tag, it's based on the parent account level, which is awesome. Oh, so, so you bring up a very good point. For people who don't know about umbrella accounts, do you mind explaining how you guys are using that, how you're deploying yeah. it? I'm going to pull up our tab real quick so you can see it. So this started with um, our our elite program, which had uh, which gives users five seats. So we have this elite parent tag that goes to parents, and um, this pretty much just gives them five uh, accounts each. Uh, we didn't change anything here. Um, we just use an action set for the child, which all it does is apply the tag and. Uh, gives them the password using the, the Membarium um, HTTP post if they don't have an account already. Um, and then we have these whitelist ones. I don't know if I really need this, um, but I put these in there because I didn't want somebody to have an a la carte purchase and have that passed down to a child account. It's only for the membership level that um, they're actually having, you know? And I put the cancel tags in here too, just in case, because I didn't know. And I figured better safe than sorry. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and for people who aren't familiar with the concept in the first place, what this means is somebody, let's say the business owner buys a membership to the site, then they can give up to five in this case of their team members access also. And where this is really, really powerful is if somebody is taking courses where the progression is being tracked or the quizzes, then you don't have your employees coming in and messing up your progression and where you are. They have their own, you know, tracking and, and all that kind of stuff. And, um, I wonder when, do you guys remember when you added this? Like how long have you been doing it? Uh, we probably added this functionality in back in October, November on the site, maybe December. Gotcha. How did, how was it received? Uh, I mean, it's, it's great. People, people enjoy it. Um, it's, it makes it a lot easier to, um, I can show you on, I'll show you when we go to the scalable site, we, we have the same implementation there. Uh, but I have a, a account logged in that's a parent account, so you can kind of see how we're using it. Um, but it's uh, it works great. It's it's nice to be able to to for people to manage that themselves and not have to worry about asking us to give access to anybody. Um, mm -hmm. As well as view the progress as well with some of the the the, the hook set um, and very has in there that work with Long Dash. Gotcha. Um, well, let's let's jump over to Scalable if you're ready, and yep. and I'll explain my experience first, but maybe then um, Richard, you can elaborate on this a little bit. So, sure. so I was you know taking courses and doing things and buying courses for for my team and even for other people sometimes when they needed stuff from Digital Marketer, and from my memory, I basically got an email about the event itself, the Scalable mm -hmm. Impact Live, and went to that, and then there they were basically saying, hey, you can join this Founders Board. So I did that. And so my question is, is Scalable an outgrowth of Digital Marketer or does it have its own separate customer acquisition system? Yes and yes. Um, so, you know, we like to we like to be one, you know, kind of one step removed. If we're gonna go into another market, we like to have a bit of a competitive advantage and be able to at least tap the database that we have, right? It's not, this isn't far enough removed to believe that, you know, we don't have founders and people like yourself that are on the digital marketer list that there are times where you needed to put on your marketing hat and that's what growth looked like um you know it's it was our natural journey so uh it does it, it scalable was stood up 
by digital marketer, right? The first place we went to, to launch it, especially for proof of concept was the digital marketer list. Um, I think we officially launched scalable kind of Q4 of 2020, right? So that was kind of the official beta launch uh, of scalable. Uh, now, I mean, scalable's got its own, uh, all of our companies are on their own P&Ls. Uh, we have a mix of dedicated team and shared resources uh, from accounting and HR um, overall like growth. Uh, we have a, a specialized growth team. Um, and then we have our, uh, you know, our, our, um, our, our tech RevOps basically. Um, so Scalable's acquisition model um, is, is its own. It, it's very different uh, than digital marketer. You know, we're, we're about to release one of three books. Uh, that'll be a big, a big deal. Scalable's pretty heavy on assessments. So less of the, um, come in on a specific lead magnet, buy something small, uh, ascend. It's more assessment to um, to consult, right? Again, keeping with that, um, you know, the higher price point, it takes a very different sales motion. Now, we still do have um, some uh, one funnel that is um, a little lower on the, the purchase price um, at Scalable. You can see here our level seven masterclass. Um, we have the seven levels of scale. Um, it's kind of a framework that we walk uh, entrepreneurs through to figure out how you go from kind of that that proof of concept idea up into this you know I'm, I'm I've now kind of gone through the five exits of an entrepreneur and I'm no longer a, I'm no longer a startup founder I'm no longer an entrepreneurial operator uh, I'm an entrepreneurial investor so how do I you know how do I leverage not only my wealth that has you know come from my business but also my knowledge and my network uh, to enable uh, others and and grow my wealth grow my portfolio so the seven levels is kind of where everything maps back to at scalable. And um, really we want to make sure that, that that is kind of the CVJ, right? If you think of the customer value journey for digital marketer, the simplicity of that is a roadmap uh, and the overarching framework, we have that for scalable. So we wanted to bring that down um, in accessibility, reduce friction. Uh, so we have our seven levels report and that goes into the seven level masterclass, which is a, a direct purchase online. But really for, uh, for scalable, uh, most of the journey starts with our scalability score, right? Our scalability score identifies uh, the, the eight scale constraints and gives you a score, an opportunity score on each one. Uh, and that really uh, goes seamlessly into, uh, into one of our strategy sessions, which is how people would, would usually either join one of our live cohort-based accelerators uh, for our scalable operating system or um, if they qualify, join Founders Board or Founders Board X. Gotcha. So, and Taylor, can you show um, the scalability score? Yes. Because that's a really cool integration that we have um, with Score App, but we've also pulled it in through Keep and Infusionsoft and then pulled it in and we're displaying it through, um, I think we're pulling it in through, I don't know. Look at me about to yeah. say I have a technical ex explanation. We're uh, actually pulling I'll these through with, uh, with, with short codes, again, Mendarium short codes that pull the Keep contact fields. So these are all custom fields we have set up in, inside of Keep and it's pulling these from here so we can get the same results that they get on the thank you page of the actual assessment and re-show them here for that user. And this is inside of a member's account um, and we can also show a record. Uh, we encourage all of, our, all of our members, all of our clients to retake this score um, every quarter, right? Because we believe that this is kind of like you know, kind of like a golf game for you golfers out there. Like you never just, finally, I'm good at everything, right? If you're a golfer, you know, like putting, chipping, you know, driving, whatever. Um, there's always something that you need to work on. Kind of here where we focus and we get clarity up, maybe demand goes down or we focus on demand and 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 yeah, clarity went down because no one really understands why we changed. So we we encouraged our, our members to, to retake this every quarter as part of their quarterly sprint planning, their strategic planning to figure out not only what initiatives they need to focus on on growing their company, but what initiative they need to focus on uh, internal communication, right? Um, and Taylor uh, was able to code something uh, using, I believe, magic or wizardry. Um, you guys may call it code. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's wizardry. Um, to where he's got a record of all, uh, and, and you can click through of your previous scores and kind of show that progression. I, I was going to say, based on his profile picture, I would guess he was using the force. The force, but... yeah. <laughs> and I, to be honest, I forgot this was my uh, my test profile picture. So I guess it's just a little <laughs> easter egg in here now. 
Um, so I have a question, a little bit technical and nerdy, but if you say you're storing this in custom fields, how do you show a history? Because isn't the custom field overwritten? It is. So what we do is, I'm actually using Zapier for it. So we have this here, and this is uh, obviously like the, the progression of scores. But um, so all I'm doing in Zapier is when they submit it, I'm taking that this string of results that, and they're all separated by commas, and then just appending on the new ones afterwards. And then in here, I'm using JavaScript just to say, hey, for each comma, make a new line. And then when you get to like the delineator, then you go to the next one and the next one. But it's all pulling from the same custom field. So it's just a big text area that contains all of these numbers. And then we, we put it in place like this. Very cool. Gotcha. So text area. So that's, that's how I would have done it too. Yeah, I, I know that's what you <laughs> were about to say. He just beat me to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, this, yeah. this, this is really cool because um, you know, you talk about how the two are different and I know, I know you've got like quizzing and stuff after people take courses on the DM side, but it's almost like on the DM side, you, you already know what the issues and the solutions are and they just right. have to partake. Whereas over here, it's a, it's a bit more complex. Businesses are, are all a bit different, right? Um, mm -hmm. mm -mm, so you said this is the same tech stack, a lot of the same stuff. And I think Taylor, you wanted to, you wanted to show the group accounts over here. Oh, yes. Um, so yeah, this, uh, on this, this site, we're using the Buddy Bros uh, theme. Mm -hmm. um, it's just out of the box. It works great with LearnDash and then Mimperium um, works with that as well, obviously. Um, but here, so I can show you the umbrella account. So we have this kind of set up two ways. So again, this is all using custom fields. And I think I have it open in another browser. I'll show you in a minute um, how it pulls these over. But it's it's great because you can you can see their score, you can view their progress. Um, actually, I actually don't think that one has any progress. Let me try this one. Yeah, for us, it was really important not only to get the um, the primary account holder, the founder, the CEO, you know, that that person's scalability score. But for us, we want to make sure as part of clarity that we have the key team members. So when you join Founders Board, you get up to seven uh, key team members that you can add to this platform. And one of the things we do in onboarding and, and through account management is get those team members to take the assessment and then we link them all in, in the primary account. So each team member can see their assessment, the primary account holder can see everyone's assessment. And now that's when breakthroughs happen, right? As a founder, if I'm like, no, 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 everybody on our team understands exactly what we're doing. It's very clear where we're going. It's very clear of our business model. It's very clear of our product line, total clarity. Well, you know, founders kind of suffer from uh, entrepreneurial optimism, I believe, right? And what's clear to us maybe isn't clearly articulated to the team. This is a place where we can see, like, I may think I'm 100 on Clarity, or I'm 85 on Clarity, but I could go down and maybe literally everybody else on the team is 58. It's just such a great, like you said, every business is different, but every team makeup is also different. I may see that everybody's Clarity is, is 85 or higher except one. Right, so what story does this tell? I think having the assessment, having it as an individual, being able to see the different, uh, the, the progression and the change is a, is a great way to self-report on growth. Seeing it as a team is a way to allow us to be more prescriptive, right? Allow us to, to drive people um, to, to trainings or conversations or tools, whether it's you know, communications or capital or you know, strategy that's lacking, um, it, it, it becomes, a diagnostic and prescriptive tool for us, our account managers, and frankly, our customers to use. So this this unique setup has, has been amazing uh, for us and I, I believe our customers. Yeah, this is, this is so cool because this stuff that you guys are doing in Scalable where you're teaching how to scale a business, right? Regardless of the industry, it's, um, I heard someone describe it once. They're like, it's not something that you do, it's something that you keep doing. It's more like a practice that happens always, right? right? Um, so yeah, having that ongoing assessment and especially the visibility into the team members, because I know for, for me, um, when I acquired a company recently and my team grew, it kind of grew from the point where I could know and manage and talk to everybody to outside of that. And that's when all mm. this stuff becomes paramount. You know, one of my mentors told me, he's like, look, when you go from like less than 10 to more than 10, it's not twice as hard, like 10 to 20 people on your team is not twice as hard. It's at least five times as hard because yeah not everybody sees it the way you do, like you're talking about with clarity. Um, and so keeping tabs on this and then being able to go to that specific person and say like, hey, you know, you have a different score than, than these other six people, they seem on the same page. How can we 
catch you up? What questions do you have, right? Um, this is really powerful. So you mentioned that a lot of the things on the scalable side are, are, are somewhat, I forget the words you use, but I'm going to say diagnostic. You're trying to actually first figure out what your client needs and, and then steer them in the right direction. So my question is based on these things, uh, the scalability score, is this only for the business owner or are you guys doing something based on this? So I think Taylor, you're highlighting uh, tools and, and what we've done is we've, so these are the, what you see in those eight categories are the scale constraints. So uh, now we have mapped the tools that we have by scale constraints. So if clarity is an issue or if demand's an issue, you can come in here and say, this is an issue, what do I do? And, and the technology will start to sort and say like, hey, if, if, if you're struggling with clarity, here are the tools that it's tools and training. So we're big on frameworks, right? We're big on, you know, the clarity compass. If you're struggling with clarity, that one's kind of a dead on, right? The clarity compass uh, is, is the way to go. This is our alignment tool, really making sure that everyone understands kind of that, that, that mission, our strategic anchors, our core values, our, our 12Q or three-year target and how everything pushes up towards that. Um, so um, tying in that assessment to the tools to affect those different things and, and making sure that the technology on the back end allows for seamless access when you're when you're there, you know, post-diagnostic, when you're when you when you know the problem you're trying to solve, um, this, you know, the the custom um, custom categories up here have been, I, I believe, very helpful um, for our members. Yeah, I mean, that's that's such a cool tie-in and then sorting them like that. Um, when you say you guys are big on frameworks, which, which I know you are, how much of that is marketing versus useful? Meaning other people have terms for some of these same concepts. Why not just use their term versus it seems like you guys come up with, with new terms. And to my mind, your terms actually fit better most of the time. And so I'm wondering how much of it was, hey, we just need to be unique in market versus no, this is actually just better. Um, yeah, I mean, better, different worked for us. Uh, look, uh, we didn't seek to build scalable, right? That wasn't, um, it was a, we tried to use everyone else's stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's so much, it would have been preferable if we could just take what other people had, had, had built and what was available in some of these different systems and deploy it and have success. Um, now, some things work, others didn't, some things worked for a while, others didn't, so when, you know, when we, we ran into a ceiling, right. And had to, it was, it was obvious, like we've got to build something for ourselves. So we default to uh, building things that are transferable. In fact, it's, it's one of the ways that we look at um, our, our methodology here in scalable. So SPV um, by you know, sales profit value um, it are the, the, the categories of value in your company, right? How do you increase your sales? Uh, how do you uh, increase your profits? And then how do you increase transferable value, right? Frameworks are transferable value. So I don't know if it's as much marketing as it is kind of a core belief of ours that we need to create transferable value within our own company and within others companies. So um, for us, it's the difference between um, a guru and a brand, right? Even a personality driven brand and just the brand itself, that's transferable value. Like we were intentional when we transitioned from the Ryan Dice show to digital marketer. Um, same thing here. We want to make sure that that when we're creating these frameworks, they're created because not, not out of, we want something like that, but it needs to be ours. For whatever reason, we couldn't get the available things to work for us across the different industries we were in. Therefore, we had to make something new. And, you know, one thing can only have one name. So we didn't want to take something and take a name that someone else had already <laughs> used. So when, when we created something new, we, we gave it a new name. Um, but I, I think it does help in, in dif differentiation in the, in the market, but unfortunately it can, it can go the other way too. Um, I believe that we can be seen as jargon heavy, right? Internal jargon. Um, once you know, you feel like you're on the inside because everyone's using this lingo, this jargon, this language and SPV and level seven and 12 Q and QSP and got it. Yeah, I know that. When you know you feel like you're on the inside, when you don't know what people are talking about, you either feel left out or unintelligent, right? Maybe not as smart. Neither of those are good feelings. So we have to be intentional in marketing, not in the way that you were, you were intending it. We've got to make sure that we're marketing in a way that makes um, that, that clearly 
uh, indoctrinates people into our jargon, into our methodology so that we don't give them those negative feelings unintentionally, right? So back to the level seven and why would we have a, a really low ungated and, and lower level entry point if really our, our average pur purchase price is quite high because we're talking about mastermind coaching consultant because we need to indoctrinate people into not only our methodologies, but into the, the, the jargon, uh, into, into our naming conventions, right? So we have, I could, it could be a benefit in marketing. It could also be a detriment if you're not really, really careful. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause you know, some of them aren't immediately obvious what it is, but right. honestly, they're interesting. They, they make me mm -hmm. curious. And like I said, my experience has been, even though I understand a lot of the old school jargon, um, some of the ways that you guys phrase things, I guess it just hits different. I see it differently. I, I either, you know, see the part of it I should have been seeing. Uh, I, I don't know quite how to describe it, but I find it useful. And I don't know if that's an age thing. Cause often a lot of the people talking on this subject are, are a bit older, right? They're kind of like these wizened business people who are like, oh, you need strategic planning and, and all these kinds of things. But your approach seems kind of just I don't want to call it down and dirty because it's not it's not sloppy at all, but it's it's just more real, um, maybe for this time. So I find it useful, and and I think Thank a you. lot of membership, yeah, yeah, um, I think a lot of membership site owners could benefit from, you know, coming up with a, a unique way to bring their content out. Uh, but like you said, they got to be careful to not make it too coded, right? Right. Yeah. So we've done that here with, with the tools, um, but also the trainings. So the trainings don't follow, um, just the same, uh, search categories. So, um, if you go over Taylor, I think it's, it's cool to see here. Um, we, we also have, um, like, like I said, um, SPV, so, uh, profits, um, sales and value. So bankable profits, leveraged sales, not just sales, leveraged sales and transferable value. Those mm. are kind of the, the categories that all of our trainings fall into, but, you can also look over here in the scale con, uh, constraints. We want to pull that through. What are you trying to solve for? Or um, then we we can come over to the actual category um, and 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 do some searching there uh, as well. Not just by topic, but um, you know by by the type of training. So we have you know our courses, um, which um, asynchronous, you know on demand. We have our uh, accelerators, which are are typically cohort based. Um, and then we have um, our, our different AMAs or live uh, coaching calls. Gotcha. Um, we are at the top of the hour. Do you guys have time for one more question or do you got to run? Absolutely. Yeah, I want to make sure you get to see the back end um, uh, and, and some of the stuff there. I know Taylor's done some some different stuff um, with with the way that, that groups are done here that I think is pretty cool. Uh, and also the calendar functionality has been good. So I want to make sure we're here to add value and not leave anyone hanging. Yeah, I want to see both of those things from Taylor, but I have one question touching back on something you said earlier that uh, that I learned from Ryan. I, I forget where he was speaking, but he was talking about this, and I'd never heard anybody speak on it before, um, but I, I find it so interesting and so applicable to people with membership sites. It was when he was talking about transferring his personal brand onto the mm -hmm. digital marketer brand. So can yeah. you just, you, you alluded to it a little, but can you talk about how you guys did that and maybe some tips for somebody who wants to say, you know, I'm no longer Joe Smith. I want to become whatever brand, you know, quilting or basketball or right. Sure. How, how do they do that? Um, well, you still have to be Joe Smith, right? Um, you it's, it's an, um, I think it does come down to transferable value, right? What, what brands typically need is a worthy guide, right? What brands need is a, a brand ambassador. What brands need is someone um, that has the ability to be a human, have personality, right? Have that soul, that heart, but then point back and we need to be able to pull the characteristics that made that person interesting into the soul, the heart of the brand. That comes, shows up in, in, in design, in brand voice, in character diamond. There's a lot of intentionality that, that is involved in the architecture of a brand, not a logo, not a website, right? Not your color palette. Those things all matter, right? But in your... Um, you know, in, in your character diamond, right? Like how does, how does your brand speak? Because if you're speaking from a brand, a brand is everyone. So everyone has to be intentional and adopt the same brand voice, right? So it is an intentional creation of, 
of a living thing, right? Not an entity, but a living thing. We have to say, what is this thing? Then making sure that it's a transition from, you know, Joe Smith to, uh, you know, the brand, whether it's, you know, Joe's clothes, right? Like if we're going to go from one to the other, it's not a complete de dispar uh, like a departure of Joe. Joe's still there, but when are we forward facing the brand? For us, it happened uh, predominantly in email subject lines, right? We mailed from Ryan Dice. Then we mailed from um, Ryan dash digital marketer or Ryan Dice dash digital marketer, then Ryan dash digital marketer in that from line, then eventually digital marketer. Like really, I believe that that slow transition um, is the thing that had the biggest impact in the adoption of the brand because most of our brand impressions at the time happened in the inbox, right? So it was there and it was making sure that we had to have the CVJ. That's, I think that's the other thing, like to your, your point about the framework. Um, if the differentiator, right? If the, the, the core like value that you're bringing and kind of that, that, that big picture is the person it's really, really hard to separate the person into a brand. You can have multiple worthy guides if the brand has a methodology or a tool or something that everyone's pointing back authority towards, right? This is transferable. A human is not, right? So for us, when we build new brands, we build um, building them brand first, framework first. Like what is that primary, um, what is that, what is that? methodology that we're gonna lead with, uh, whether it's the seven levels of scale, whether it's at, what is the thing that everyone who is a brand ambassador, whether or not they have equity or they're a partner or they're a founder, everyone can point back to. That's what allows you to build a brand, right? So whether it's the CVJ, whether it's the, the seven levels of scale, some flagship framework that can stand the brand up and then you can have multiple ambassadors point back to it. Wow. <laughs> I, I love that so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For those of you listening, you may, uh, Richard, do you guys have a course on the character diamond or some sort of training on it? I think we have a training inside of digital marketer, um, on, and, and it's funny, I was going through digital marketer site today and I was like, what is this training? Um, the name, I mean, is it's hidden very well. Um, but it does go into, to branding, um, uh, Taylor, if you could go back over to Digital Marketer and, and go to the workshops, that would be helpful. Um, I think we could find it quickly. I, I was shocked by the, by the workshop, but Ryan does go into kind of that transferable value, that brand voice. Um, I don't know if you can search by Ryan or not. Probably can not. You can, oh, look yeah. at that. Inside of training. No, I need to go over to the, the elite coaching one. Um, and just while they're looking for this, guys, what we're talking about is a lot of membership site owners, their success is kind of like their success in branding themselves backfires later when they want to exit the business or, or even mm -hmm. just when they want to have a some time to themselves, right? Yeah. So it's architecting a branding blueprint. So if you're a lab member, um, you can go through this. There were so many good ones in here. It's funny because we're putting together a bundle offer on just this right now. Like, how do you create that brand? And it's the brand blueprint, it's the homepage. We were literally having that conversation uh, today with Mark DeGrasse before we came in here, who's, he's the president of Digital Marketer now. So saying like, we really need to have something more forward facing on this. So it's funny that it came up, uh, but this is really where, you know, uh, where that instant authority framework, that's how you build that brand. So this, if you're a lab member, uh, you definitely need to get in on this. If you're not, I don't actually know that we have this for sale for all of cart purchase, um, to my knowledge. Maybe it is if you just go to the site. I, I don't actually know that. that. That's okay. Taylor, do you know? Uh, I do not know, but if it's not, I'll, yeah. I'll put it on there on the products page. Join the lab. Join the lab. It'll be fun. You'll love it. Um, <laughs> but it is really, really good stuff on how to create that brand. Yeah. Thank you for asking an amazing question. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I agree with you. They should join the lab because it's, like I said, when you're selling marketing, it's almost easy because if they just do what you're saying, they're going to get an ROI. It's like, it's a no brainer to take this stuff. If you have a business, you're trying to market online. Um, Taylor, will you, thanks for bouncing around for us. Um, will you hop over to the other site and show us what you did in the group accounts on the scalable? Yes. Let me show you on, uh, as a user real quick first. So 
I think I'm set up as the group leader or the moderator in this case. But so the way it works with Buddy Boss is there's social groups built in using their Buddy Press, which is also a separate plugin of the theme. Um, but Learn Dash groups and Buddy Press groups kind of work hand in hand. Um, so the Buddy Press brings in like the social feed. Obviously, the test group is not allowed in here. Um, but it also uh, allows you to do trainings uh, together kind of as a team. So the group leader can see the progress of the team members uh, inside that group, um, as well as be able to communicate about them and share, uh, you know, resources and documents and um, have Zoom meetings about the specific meetings stuff too, which is, which is really nice. And can we pause all, here for uh, a second, Taylor? Yeah. Um, not to draw this out, but this is really cool. Like really, really cool. And let me give you a use case. So we can create a, a, a asynchronous training. We can duplicate that training and allow moderators, um, whether it's um, a, a, an SBA or whether I wanted to lead a cohort based version, I can lead a cohort based class from an asynchronous training that is duplicated in here. Only people that are in my group would have it. If I'm the moderator of the group, then I'm actually triggering the conversations. And if anyone's uploading files or chatting, it's coming to me. So we can take an, uh, an asynchronous training, an on-demand training. Someone else can create a release schedule and actually lead that course as a live cohort-based facilitator. So when we have cohort-based courses, we're able to just duplicate our on-demand trainings change them change up the delivery mechanism and make sure that the person receiving all the feedback is the person we're leading that leading that cohort all through using this these groups it is truly a game changer they don't have to come in here and do trainings they're basically a, like it's releasing a training every month or every every week um then they're showing up to have a call about that if there's an assignment the assignment that's being created and submitted through uh through this this site through their login only goes to their instructor it doesn't go to the site owner or the moderator it goes to the group moderator it is really 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 cool it it is really cool um for people who don't you know use or understand the concept of cohorts can you explain why that's better than just delivering an evergreen course yeah it and it it may not always be better so to me um if i want to if i want to consume something i'm probably going to go on demand, I want to go at my pace, right? But when we're talking about cohort based um, synchronous training, typically what we're talking about is we're all starting and ending at the same time. So we're going to go through module one together, we're going to have uh, a, a conversation about it, we're going to we're going to have assignments or or deliverables that we create and then are uploaded. So we're all on the same course, think about it like college, right? You're in a college course, everyone starts at the same time, everyone ends at the same time. Um, so these group cohort based trainings, you may have 25 people that are going through um, one of these accelerators together at the same time. It's great because now you're getting the perspective of of your peers, right? I, if I'm going through this with Micah and I'm hearing Micah or seeing what he's submitted, if he decides to share it with the entire group, not just the instructor, uh, which can happen here. Um, I'm having breakthroughs or seeing practical application of something that maybe I was a little, I had a little tunnel vision on. I could only see it through the lens of, of my scenario, my company. Um, now I'm seeing uh, Micah's take on it through his, and maybe that's the thing that enables a breakthrough. So it really is everyone, it's a small group. Everyone starts at the same time, ends at the same time. Typically there's a facilitator or a moderator that's delivering the training um, and, and hosting weekly or uh, biweekly coaching uh, or, or um, Q&A calls in and around the topic that was released that week. Gotcha. And and for me, I've done, you know, I've consumed both. And, and like you said, sometimes it's better to get the content at your own pace. Mm -hmm. um, but there are certain topics where it is so useful to have that Q&A, to have people right. experiencing it at the, at the same time as you, you know, where they can say like, yeah, I had that problem too. This is what I found. Um, and it's cool to me, like you were saying earlier, that you're able to just kind of clone these things to start cohorts mm -hmm. and, and make it pretty simple. Cause that's, that's probably the reason not to do co cohorts is there's a little bit more management, but if you can escape that and give people the feeling that they're coming through it live and they are special and it's being delivered to and for them rather than, you know, just a copy of something that was made long ago, really cool. And for us, it was the ability to have other people facilitate without having to worry, could they deliver the content with the same, um, mm -hmm the same ability that we could, 
right? So how can I have true facilitators deliver this? Well, that they are, you know, they're they're facilitating. So we they're delivering our content by assigning the module. The module plays. It's us. The live aspect of it is you know, the office hours when they're doing work together. And that's all integrated through Zoom. Each each different group can have its own Zoom link. So all their Zoom is happening um, through a, a specific Zoom link for their group. It it really is, um, it is a great way to scale up the accelerator or, or uh, synchronous training and, and still have a lot of control, especially if someone else is gonna deliver or moderate. It's really amazing. Um, is there anything else you wanted to show us about this stuff, Taylor? Um, I guess one thing about the groups, it's pretty cool. So uh, kind of like Richard said, we can have this the same course going on in different groups at the same time. And so the way we've kind of figured that out, the best way to do it is obviously in LearnDash, you can have the ability to trip out a lesson at a specific date or a specific time. Um, but if you have it so they have to go in order and you put uh, an assignment or an essay or a quiz that has to be manually graded, they can't get past that point until it's graded. So uh if somebody's leaving this is okay hey so like next monday we're gonna start on this part they'll just leave that either that assignment ungraded or the quiz ungraded and everybody stops there until he goes and hits okay approved and then now it unlocks the next one so it's a way for the same course to be in everyone's thing that we don't have 20 versions in the same course it's just based on whenever the instructor says okay let's go to the next one which is uh which is pretty sweet and saves a lot of time from having to go in on the back end and it makes it also so the uh, whoever's whoever's leading these they don't actually need admin access and WordPress. They're just set up as a, in this case, a group leader um, through Buddy Boss and through the LearnDash, which is awesome. Really awesome, so smart. Um, and for anybody listening, these are problems that these guys have had the, the time and experience and resources to solve, but they're problems that you would probably run into as you try to scale up your membership site at some point, if, if you're really kind of pushing to the edge of what you can do and the value you can deliver with your subject matter, your curriculum. Um, this is amazing. Uh, what was the other part of this scalable site that we we're gonna show? It was the groups and what was the other part? Um, let me see, let me pull the back end and see. Okay, well, here's, well, I'll just show this because I have it open right now. Um, but here's using, again, short codes within inside the, uh, the umbrella list children list to mm -hmm. show those uh, custom fields we had. And uh, one of the, the best things about the short codes that Imperium has is that it only allows you to put in contacts IDs for the people that are in your team, uh, like your umbrella, your child accounts. So you couldn't like put somebody else's ID here in short code and see everybody's backend information, which is awesome. So the, yeah. the, the built-in privacy there is nice. Um, and it also makes it super easy. Obviously this is a little, it looks funny here, but it's just copying and pasting the short code and changing out the field name. Um, which is pretty cool there. Let me go to the back end real quick. Let me see if we have anything different as far as plugins goes here. Again, we need to update these, so I apologize for all the, the notifications you're about to see pop up. No, I um, totally get it. Yeah, so we are using Buddy Boss here. That brings that social uh, group aspect to it. And LearnDash does have groups, but the kind of mixing those two works great with the, the Buddy Boss plugin. Um, let's see. Again, we're using the autocomplete. This is just a database search to replace tool. We changed the domain name for the, the members area. So that just replaced it everywhere where we had to go fix it. Um, yeah, Buddy Boss. Uh, these are pretty cool. So we have the dynamic content uh, for both the groups and the profile. So I uh, like the My Team uh, profile tab, which was, let me go back real quick. Yeah, it's uh, My Team here, and we renamed these. We added the groups in. Those are all done using these these plugins. So you can you can literally just name it whatever you want and drop it right in the same template and uh, add your content in with short code, which is awesome. Um, again, Elementor is uh, the main thing for any page board that's not based in uh, the Learn Dash templates. Content clone is great if you want to duplicate a course without having to go through and remake every single lesson. Um, more Learn Dash plugins. Yeah, it's pretty much all the same stuff. We are using Smush here for um, lazy loading images. Some of these are image heavy. So let me ask a, a general question, because it sounds like the two sites are very similar, except on the DM side, like Richard was saying, you guys use Facebook, but over here you're using this internal community stuff as well as a Slack group. 
Um, are there any other major differences besides the way you do the two communities, would you say? I mean, not necessarily. Uh, the The biggest difference on the actual website itself is just the way um, the, the, the theme really, because there's a lot more custom stuff on the DM side because we do have that ability for people to buy one product or buy multiple ones. Um, mm -hmm. The way we're doing it on this site is everything is actually set up as a locked course, a closed course. So there's no way to buy it in the actual site itself, uh, but we're using um, our auto enroll tags. So if they if they have the membership level, they auto enroll to it. So um, if you only have one uh, purchase on your just one accelerator, for example, you would only see that in your, your dashboard. You wouldn't see any other products. Any of those filters would be gone. Um, so we kind of just customize a little bit more based on the, the user level. But for, uh, otherwise, the, the tech stacks are really, really similar. Gotcha. And I, I should point out for people listening, as far as Memberium goes, um, Dave programmed in a lot of extra things for it to work specifically with LearnDash, with Buddy Boss and some of these other tools. So it's not just that everything's syncing down to the WordPress user table. There's a little bit of extra stuff happening where it can kind of pull from here and there and create this integrated experience. And then you guys are making amazing use of the short codes, of course. Um, is there anything else about the scalable site that that you want to show or that you think would be helpful or interesting? I can't think of anything, Richard. No, I, th I think the calendar has been, I mean, there's nothing unique uh, about it, um, but for us making sure that there's a, there's a centralized place and we can, you know, we can swap out the calendar based on the membership level. Um, so if we have multiple memberships, which luckily this one, uh, it, you know, scalable is, is simpler and more complex at the same time. We don't have the multiple levels of membership. We don't have all the a la carte. However, we do have, you know, peer to peer mentorship uh, and mastermind groups. So we have a lot of these groups on the back end. So outside of groups, it's very simple. Uh, but here, you know, the uh, ad event calendar has been kind of a, a big game changer uh, for us and our ability to, to make sure that members know what's going on. You know, the, the, all of the events that are happening because they, they are, they are live, right? All these things are, are, are live every week. Um, while the, you know, the, the recorded can be consumed later, uh, making sure that everyone sees these. That's been, that's been pretty cool. Um, I can't really think of much, much else. Yeah. And again, this is just loaded using one of those, uh, the, the, the plugins that goes on top of Buddy Boss. I forget the name of it, um, but I just had that up a second ago. But uh, yeah, this, this is great. We can customize anything here. And then this is this is dependent on the user level as well. Their Memberian membership shows a different uh, calendar based on whatever it is. So again, using shorter codes um, everywhere is, is the easiest thing. Cool. Um, so question, since we're talking about the calendar, about mixing recorded with live a little bit, it does seem like you guys have a ton of live stuff in Scalable, like all the time I'm getting, hey, if you need help with this, there's a live call. If you need help with that, there's a live call. Um, what was that decision-making process like uh, as far as how much, you know, can we just provide for these people in video versus how much hands-on do they need? Yeah, I, it was, it was two questions. Um, one, the, the, you know, how much can we provide and, and obviously make a business case, right? Cause we, we like to look at everything, customer case, business case, we have to be able to make both. Um, and then once we figured out like really what people need, um, is kind of one live um, workshop where we're going to either focus on something to increase sales, increase profit or increase that transferable value each and every month, uh, usually from one of uh, either the, the principals or one of our, our um, six mentors that we have. Those need to be live, but they're easily, uh, you know, they're easily switched over to on demand, appropriately categorized and, and they're there. Um, that's more of the like proactive education, right? Like, what are we doing? Well, what are we saying? This is important. This is where we'd like everyone to focus this, this week. Then the, where do people just have help? So for us breaking down, you know, those six different levels, we have the eight, uh, you know, the eight scale constraints, really they're kind of, you can compress them, um, into six when you're talking about mentors and just saying, how do we make sure that those people are available? Uh, each and every week so that you're never more than about 10 days away from um, you or someone on your team being able to get uh, an operation or a finance or an accounting or an M&A answer. Obviously, you can you know go directly to your advisor or to one of us in the Slack group if you need it. But um, for us, it was a mix of what's the proactive education and tools that we're providing. And then what is the um, you don't you shouldn't feel compelled to show up 
right? Like you don't need to show up to the uh, momentum coaching. You know, like Taylor, will you hover over today's momentum coaching? Like who, who was that today? Uh, management and metrics, right? So, uh, uh, you know, that would have been Tom, uh, Tom Pierce. So if Tom's on, if you've got management metrics questions uh, about how you built your scorecard, about your, your communication, like Tom's going to be there. And if you've got questions, you show up. If your team has some questions, they show up. If not, don't worry about it. Right. It's we we wanted to make sure that it wasn't um, so much so that you felt bad if you didn't show up. So that was kind of the 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 mix of live versus not is more what category does it fall into? Um, and and then as far as membership, I think since you know we're talking about the technology that enables it, but so much of that membership program is about uh, consumption, is about engagement and that group engagement. There's a fine line between over communicating and making someone feel bad because they're not using it, making them feeling guilty. So for us, being super intentional about member comms is is critical. So um, the technology enables us to to really push engagement and make it super easy. Then the communication, like we send out a, you know, this month, kind of next month, here's what next month looks like. Every Sunday we send out this week and, and all the activities uh, every Monday, we post in the the general group um, in Slack the same schedule, so everyone knows. Then, for the monthly intensives, uh, we have our account managers reach out to every single member and say, "Here's the upcoming intensive. Um, who on your team would you like to attend? I want to make sure that we get them all the access information." So it's not just massive email blasts, and there is that high end one on one touch, um, so that you know it's there if you need it but we do not send dedicated emails about our weekly uh, calls because they happen so frequently. Gotcha. Yeah, this is, uh, I, like I said, I know being a member of the program, my experience when I hear you explain it that way, it's like, yeah, that's interesting because I haven't ever thought, oh, I'm missing out. I just see those calls and it's like, oh, if I wanna get in there, I can, but, but I don't feel like I'm missing value. Um, and I'm sure that's something like you are saying, you're doing in your communication intentionally. Uh, so you guys have been, so generous with your time and showing all this stuff. Thank you so much uh, for people who, and I'm just going to give a shameless plug for you guys. You know, if you're building a membership site, you probably need DM honestly, because most membership site people are not the best marketers. And so just going over to these guys where they have these, like Richard saying, transferable frameworks, you can access the content. There's the live calls, there's the community. I, I can say from my experience that when I need something, that's where I go. And when somebody asks a question about something that I don't know, I say, go buy that course. So uh, for anybody out there, go to digitalmarketer.com or go to scalable.co. I'm also, like I said, a, a member of the scalable thing. Join their, their founders board. And I think this is just a truism of you guys in general. You always over deliver. Every course, every event, both these companies, you know, my experience has been that. And you guys didn't know me. You weren't trying to do something special for me. It's just how you show up. So I really, really, really appreciate that. And I think this case study is just a continuation of that. Um, do you guys want to say anything else to anybody watching? Um, I'll say something to you. I'll say thank you. You've been very kind, not only in, in uh, inviting us here, but, but in speaking, um, you know, uh, just the, the, the way that you, you talk about our programs, we appreciate it. And, and I think that you've underestimated the value you've added uh, to our ability to do what we do, right? So um, we uh, we appreciate you, and I didn't have to know you to know what you did. Um, we will show up anytime because what we've walked through um, is enabled by you and what you've built. So I'll, uh, I'll I'll thank you. I'll thank your audience for having us, but I really will thank you for what you've built and what you've enabled us to do. Uh, so that's that's all I have to say is thank you. Thanks, Richard, and thank you, Taylor. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody else, go to digitalmarketer.com or scalable.co. Check out their stuff. And if you have any questions about Membarium, as always, you can email us. We're happy to answer. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys.